Hello, Cassandra. Hello, how are you? Hi, Carolyn. Good. Thank you for joining me on a Sunday. Absolutely. What, what would be your usual Sunday? What would your activities on a Sunday be? Um, well, my husband is a minister, so we are always at church on Sunday morning. <laughs> um, but then I come home and I usually take a nap. I, that's like my one day. I really take a nap. So it's my kind of my nap day. And then it's like very much drudgery. It's laundry, dishes, cleaning up the house, getting ready for the week. So kind of boring. <laughs> but yeah, morning I was think that's rather nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the, the joys of motherhood <laughs> and family, right? And, and how many children do you have? I have four children, ages 20 down to 14, and two boys, two girls. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Two of each. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. Very Are blessed. they very different in terms of their personalities? Absolutely. I think, I think you could have 20 children, and they'd all be so different. <laughs> you know, you have one, and you think, oh, I figured it out. What's the big deal? You know, like, this parenting thing, I've got it. And then you have another one. You're like, oh, my goodness, I'm starting over. <laughs> I, I don't know anything. <laughs> I basically know how to keep them alive. I don't know how to do anything else. So, yeah, it, it, they're all quite different and just pretty extremely different. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how you can love them for being different, though? Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes. I remember when my second child was born, my daughter, I had a son and I always wanted a boy first and I just fell in love with him the minute he was born. And then I had my daughter and I had this panic attack suddenly, like, how can I love her as much as I love my son? I just, you know, maybe it was hormones. <laughs> I, don't know. I just freaked out. And then I realized, you know, and that was like really a huge lesson for me in love because it just expands. It just expands to fit the need of that thing, of that person. And so I suddenly realized I, I had some guilt and I'm thinking, I don't love her enough. You know, and I, I went through this whole process and I, I just, it just hit me. Love is so expansive. It never ends. It's, it's limitless. So I, you know, each one came along and I was able to just love them just as much. So yeah, <laughs> it's great. And it changes as they develop. Yes. yes, it does. You know, you know, you're a parent too, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm even beginning to see that now. Um, my, my son has moved from his house. He's just sold his house the first time. Wow. And going into his house, it's immaculate. I mean, he was only using it on weekends, so he wasn't living in it. Uh -huh. It was a sheer pride of uh, bringing up a son that's so uh, domesticated in terms of, he cooks for himself because he was a, he trained as a head chef. So he knows wow. how to cook. And oh he sleep well, you know, and he cooks well. But in the house, uh, the carpets were clean, and it was just an amazing experience to go into somebody you brought wow. up and go, wow, that's what I brought up. <laughs> that's impressive, I have to tell you. Good for you. years later. I mean, he's not 40 yet. He'll be 40 okay. later. So it's taken time. Yeah. <laughs> but his, his answer to my praise was, well, it was an investment, Mum. I needed to make sure that if I sold it, it would be sold. As and what a wise person! That's great. Good for him. That's beautiful. It's such a you know that's still pretty young, relatively yes. young, to have that perspective. I love it. <laughs> yes. I think that's about valuing, isn't it? It's all about value. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So you you've got a family, and you've got a husband who's a minister, mm -hmm. and um, I've met you through Live Tribe. Mm -hmm. and through a wonderful founder called Roger Brooks mm -hmm. and um, I know we both value him greatly and respect him greatly and I've watched your live interview with Roger and what I heard from that interview was how relaxed he was with you in asking these wonderful questions about I think do you live fairly close to to one another or some yes, three, under three hours drive away, so it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he seemed to, to understand the dynamics. Mm. Um, but what uh, was very, um, I felt profound was his respect of you as a female and a mother mm. and as a business owner. This yeah, he did that way. Yeah, he's, he's just, um, he's such a high quality person and he is very. I don't know the right way. He is so respectful, but he's just very non-sexist. It's just not a factor to him. You know what I mean? I, I love that. 
it's very unusual you know even for from my point of view being a welsh person here mm -hmm. when i joined the chamber of commerce there were only three other females in that chamber and i can remember feeling quite young and quite dainty and fitness orientated whereas everybody else seemed to be absolutely beleaguered and worn out <laughs> been out the night before and that kind of thing and then being asked to do a presentation in front of them about my business and my business was about well-being and mm. seeing how large they were in frame and how tired they were and i honestly mm. thought i was being fed to the lions wow um but that was my <laughs> yeah that was my first experience of going into a presentation oh my and, goodness <laughs> you know, within, within the 10 seconds of asking them to engage with me, even in those days, I was quite confrontative. Mm. I could see they were falling asleep. You know, <laughs> exercise to them was quite sickening. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> mentioned that word, exercise. <laughs> oh, dear, she. So what I did was to resort back to, and I think this is good about um, if you've become a teacher or you've become trained in anything, you resort back to your tools. Right. And all I kept thinking about was they were the largest life. They were like golloping me up, as it were, you know. There's no newbie <laughs> on the block. Yeah. I then went into the mode of, oh, oh, no, you're not going to get me. And I actually got them to stand up. And they had to stand up from the sitting position because I could see they were glazed over. Yeah, falling asleep. <laughs> oh, very much, you know. The, the, the curtains had been drawn and they were going to have to sleep. And I said, no, 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 you, you, you stand up for me, please. So they all stood up and I put some music on to make it a bit more pleasant. And I said, I want you to make sure that you've got room between you and the next person. So you extend your arms. And I got them just to do a stretch. So I got them to do a fantastic arm wide, arm up and breath with it. And then I got them to bend their elbows. They were all doing it because they'd never done it before. They'd never been asked to do it before. <laughs> and then I asked them to bend their elbows, bring their hands together, and then to rub them together like this. So they're all doing this. Good idea. I said, and now I want you to do this and clap. And as they clapped, I just left the stage. <laughs> and I went, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> and they never forgot it. <laughs> I thought, if I'm going to be neat for them for the next meal, I was just going to wipe it off the plate. <laughs> and that was my first introduction to the I Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I know. I had no <laughs> idea who they were dealing with back then. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> So when you, when you said about Roger being respectful, he comes across as being so um, brilliantly different in a yeah. female world, so brilliantly aware mm. and respectful, yeah. and it's so refreshing. And he's so accomplished, you know what I mean? He has a lot to be proud of, and a lot of people would be very conceited about that, but he's yes. not. So he's not. It's a real so, deal. The, the other part of your interview that I felt that he um, was very clear about, and that was your uh, spiritualness, which I liked. Thank you. Uh, yes, you, you're doing it. You're smiling with, with the <laughs> mention of the word. How do you feel that sits in today's kind of conversation live on social media? How do you think that sits? Well, I think there are kind of two sides to spirituality now, and people for so long were not interested in a lot of spiritual things at all, you know, um, but I feel like people are more interested now, and I think that there's some sort of awakening happening, um, but sometimes I feel that there are so many people who may not have any sort of foundation or training that are trying to guide people in a spiritual way. And, you know, spirit is really talking about that immaterial part of us that, you know, connects with each other. Like if you and I had different bodies and faces, but we still had our same spirits, I feel like we would connect no matter what, because our spirits can connect to each other. And that's the same spirit that we connect with God. And, um, you know, for me, I know you and I had spoken about it's, it's the one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. And I know a lot of people 
it's my opinion and I'm gonna say that now because you know we all have our opinions but my experience has been a personal relationship with God and that he does care about me and I know a lot of people you know call it different things they call it the universe or the higher power but I do feel like for me it's a, it's a personal thing it's a, a person and he's not just kind of a, a generic universe you know I, I feel he created the universe so that's my perspective on it you know i went through school i do have some education and um in terms of the bible but i do feel you and i spoke it's a different world today and people don't respond to some more traditional uh verbiage they don't respond well to maybe some liturgical type of churchy you know uh, well, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, but just that traditional church experience. People are looking for something different. They want their spirits to be ignited because it's all within us. But some people have shoved it down so much that they're always just looking at the material things. And I think a lot of people are realizing now, man, this is it. You know, they accomplish all these material you know, objectives. Maybe they've got the you know, I know in America, it's like, oh, get your house, your car, your 1.5 kids, <laughs> you know, and like, you, you know, you've done the checklist. Or maybe, you know, I work with people in my business at the daycare who work on Wall Street, and they're very accomplished. They've, they're lawyers and um, with big farms in New York City, and yet they feel very empty. They feel very like, I don't see my kids until the weekend. I'm so stressed out. I have so much money, but I don't have time. I don't have the relationships that I wanted. And I feel that you know, the, my spirituality and what I want people is to help them find their purpose in life. And a lot of my purpose has to do with following God and what I feel he wants me to do. Um, but I, I feel very strong sense of purpose for my life. And that, so no matter how much money I'd make or don't make, or if my business is successful or not, it, it has no effect, real effect on my soul because I know that I have a higher purpose than just those material things. Does that make sense? Like they're... I, we've just become such con, uh, consumerist society, and I understand why. You know, I, you look back in history and our grandparents and the wars, and you know why they want us to do better and have more and be happy. And but I think a lot of us are finding that those things don't make you happy, and it's the relationships, it's the the purpose in life. Like, why are we here? And I, it's so so important. And I, you know, talk to my kids about that too. And. Um, you know, gosh, if it's just about the money and the accomplishment, you know, kill yourself now. It's just really, it is not going to make you happy. It really isn't. And I think I found that personally and I just, from my experience. So I, I'm happy that people are more open spiritually now, that they're more open to, I, I don't go around parading it. It's not the forefront of my my business page or anything like that, but it, I find that a lot of people are very hopeless. And I share that with them, you know, when I feel that they might be ready because I feel that, that maybe, um, you know, they need to also find their own life purpose, whatever that may be. I help support that as a coach too. Yeah. But we have something in us. There's a world and that exists that you can't see. And that has to do with our, our spiritual world and how we relate to each other. So, you know, that's, sorry, that's a long answer. <laughs> that's a really long answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very individual answer it's a very cassandra answer which <laughs> um listening to the answer what um came and surfaced in my mind was the interview brian rose did in london rio with eva schloss she's the lady who's the one of the um longer serving ostrich survivor Oh my gosh. And so when you talked about what you said there, you know, that in our parents' day, they they had it tough during the war. Well, they couldn't have been anything tougher than this lady and people that were in Ustwich. But she, the answer that you gave was very much her answer because they are they brought her fast forwarding to 2018 and what would she, what advice would she give to people today? And it comes back to that realness of family and fabric and love and relationship because the whole time that she was separated from the mother and the father was the end result of her being reunited when the caps were closed she was actually reunited with the mother and the father and you know we take that for granted we take it because um, we, we've either had the grandmother or our grandfather and mother and father with us 
so we don't see that as being the the tearing apart of your heart and soul but then the, you know to be reunited was to me salvation and, and you know in a physical sense so that's what i thought about when you were talking about that when you look at the commercialism which is what was driven after the war um, there was a town that my father used to uh, twin town with from uh, South Wales, and it was called Heidenheim. And Heidenheim had been flattened, so there was nothing left. It was just rubble. But they built a brand new town, and it was immaculate. And the words were immaculate. You know, they were pristine about how they built it. They were pristine about their education. And so you, you saw that the rubble was this pheno you know, absolutely phenomenal um, uh, town and that was the town that I stayed in you see which is why I'm coming back to and obviously as you know um, I became hospitalized in that town and I was so and I look back on it now I was so grateful because they were practicing um, herbal the herbal method of um, medicine so it wasn't just conventional medicine it was herbal medicine and I mean that's unheard of but now we are holistic, and yes. that happened in the 60s, and I'm talking 2018, and now we're becoming holistic. And mm -hmm. I'm holistic. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. You know, because yeah. that really was something I was introduced to in such a traumatic way, but in a gifted way. And this was a town that rebuilt itself, regenerated, and um, there's pride in that. Yeah. So that's how I see it. It's when you've lost something, when you, you know, you talk about um, the commercialism and the difference. It's when you've lost your home, you've lost a parent, you've lost a child. It's those experiences for me bring you back to how you see life. Yes. And how you want it. So the the I shared that with you because that that interview I recommend you listen to with Eva Shaw. I mean it was an amazing interview and it was so nice because we've got in common with us uh, Roger Brooks and uh, Brian Rose and at the end of the interview with Brian Rose who obviously is quite famous now with us all here in Britain she says to him by the way young man what's your name <laughs> Right at the end, and the interview was three hours long. And she was right at the end, by the way, young man, what's your name? Aww. I thought that was so, and he did too. You know, just, Aww. yeah, he, he just melted. You know, how sweet was that? So, so it's, it's bringing people back to who we really are to one another. That's right, all these things. Mm -hmm. Cassandra, tell me what your view is about Live Tribe because we've met on Live Tribe. What's your experience of it? And well, you know, it's so interesting. It's because it's, yeah, it's different. It's a very, I'm part of a few Facebook groups, mostly for business and, you know, growing online and that kind of thing. And um, the Live Tribe is so different. I was recommended by Pika, who's in Singapore, to join Live Tribe, and I love her. Um, I'm actually going to be meeting with her next week. I'm so excited, oh, wow. but you know, via like this, it's like on zoom, wow. but, um, we, she was telling me about it and I didn't know what she was talking about. She said, you gotta, you know, follow this. And so for me, it was more of a discovery of like, oh, you go on live every day. And I thought, okay, I used to be terrified of lives. And then I started doing it on Instagram more and I feel a little more comfortable. There's still some panicky moments because you never know what you're going to say exactly, <laughs> what you're going to do. And you're live. You can't just say, oh, delete, you know. Um, but I think I started out in a very similar way. The idea is to share you know, just a one minute video clip or so approximately every day for 21 days straight and then really a daily journal. And that's something that I know you brought up that it is a journal experience. And I think in the beginning I thought, oh, what do I need to talk about as a trainer, as a coach, as a teacher? And it, it definitely has turned more into introspective kind of journaling. This is what's happening. Um, this is how I'm feeling. This is my perspective. And I, I feel that you know watching other people's videos is helping me kind of it's very human does that make sense <laughs> it's very like we're just going on there and just expressing something it's like a little snapshot in time of that day or maybe an evaluation of an event in our lives and 
it just, it, you know, it really shows the humanity of what we're going through and you can relate to other people really well in the group. And I feel like the group is very high quality people who just really want to learn, they want to grow, they want to evolve either in business or in life. And for me, the experience has been really good. I, it's, sometimes it's hard to be vulnerable with people you don't know so well. And um, I know I could even progress more, but um, we don't want to scare anybody. But um, I, you know, I think that it, it's just creating a, a very positive feeling for me. And it's, it's a very unique experience, don't you think? It's very unique. It's very mm -hmm. different because I don't think it's been done before. So it's quite oh, pioneering. Yeah. And uh, I love the fact that you were introduced through Pika because I can remember her going live and then um, she came across as an interviewer because she said she, she interviews people. Mm -hmm. And she was asking, I remember this, she was asking an awful lot of questions. <laughs> yes. And that was what um, uh, you know, signified the, the difference between her and somebody else. But today, mm -hmm. what was happening today, and I'm only bringing this up because he's a live triber, uh, Jack Ross is a Scottish guy. I don't know if you've listened to any of his lives. I feel like he's he's quite um i would say an entertainer <laughs> and okay the, the first live i saw him i really thought i was not looking at the right channel but i saw him <laughs> bouncing up and down on a bed and um, trying to eat a pizza at the same time <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> so very funny and then i got it completely um mixed up that I thought that Gav Corliss' son is Jack Morton and Jack had been introduced and he was doing lives. Uh -huh. So I thought that this Jack, the Scottish gentleman, was his father. And I was thinking, <laughs> my gosh, <laughs> what a family. <laughs> <laughs> what a family. What a family. <laughs> anyway, I, I quickly let no it wasn't, you know, and so on and so on. But that's the kind of entertainer this Jack Cross is, you see. So he's disappeared. Now, as you know, uh, my passion is about finding your voice. So, of course, he's got a very broad Scottish accent. So you've got to really listen to him, even as a Welsh person. To right. understand <laughs> You're one step closer. But, yeah. <laughs> but he keeps chiding me on his lives. He'll say, Carolyn Williams, that Carolyn Williams, she's a bully. She's got me on here again. <laughs> He's just obviously being naughty, but he picked me <laughs> up, you see. So I'm yeah. saying he's mentioned me again. So today, <laughs> this is after he's, he's been, I would say, sleeping for the last two months. He hasn't done any lies, but he appeared yeah. today. Oh, and okay. He on today, and he said, Carolyn Williams had um, posted something that made me think that we need to go live, and why haven't we? Why haven't we gone live? You know, yeah what's the reason right. and he said the reason is because it's changed and he said you know the groups are different mm. but he said i realize i'm procrastinating and i just thought i'd do a live and a five minute can i do that so he was and then he'll start um uh calling roger brooks <laughs> so he'll shout at roger brooks as if roger's listening you know to come <laughs> and give him, yes you can do this my man you can do your he said, can I do a minute or can I do a five minute? So I thought, right. And he's, he's mentioned all this on my live, you see. Mm -hmm. and I, I've given him a reply and I've said, from a memory, I seem to remember you were doing five minutes anyway. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> from what I understand, you need to be in cycle three to start doing five minutes. So you can do your one or your five, but at least do one of them. Do okay. one, do something. <laughs> Get on there. And he did. And it's the funny, you must see it today. It's I'm going to go look at it when we get up. <laughs> it's all to do with cutting up a lemon. What? <laughs> That's what he's done it on. And he's not a chef, but he's doing it and then throwing it and juggling it and just talking about this lemon, how oh, good this lemon is for you and all this kind of thing. It's hysterical. It's as funny as the pizza one. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> and then I said to him, that reminds me of the saying, life throws lemons. There's a saying, isn't it, about... Yeah. Right? Yeah, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's the one I know. That's, <laughs> life that's throws that make lemonade. I don't, think he, I don't think he's got as far as making lemonade. <laughs> Those lemons are probably on the floor. <laughs> yes. and, he, and he used an ironing board. And he actually says, I'm using an ironing board. 
I have not a cutting board. <laughs> 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 so so, uh, I, I, I think Jack Ross needs to be signed up. Yeah, he needs his own show. <laughs> I genuinely, because uh, that's, that's how I feel. I think he is very, very funny. Yeah. Genuinely funny, yeah. You said, you, you said the right thing. The quality of people that are on Live Tribe are phenomenal. They've got their own kind of quality that they're yeah. bringing. Yeah. And it's just a wonderful mix. And it's worldwide. I, you know, for me, especially being an American, I love hearing the other accents. You know, the perspective on, um, on life is quite different. And that's really, really exciting to me because I, sometimes we tend to live in our own little bubbles, you know, where we've got our own little perspectives, our little, you know, groups that we hang with and people we interact with. And I, I just love hearing all the different perspectives. It's really cool. It's healthy. Yeah, it opens my mind more. And I, I like that. I like that perspective. Even from a political sense, it's healthy because yeah. we, we tend to, as you, you're going through your kind of era in your politics, we equally in, you know, you mentioned with Brexit in, in London and yeah. the UK, and that's all it is. Yeah. But then you realize that that's the consumption that's created for yeah. focus. And then that's something you and I talked about before we recorded this, about how we need to come back to reality and a centeredness. Yes, yes, find that centeredness. And that's different for everybody. It is. You have, to, you have to find it for yourself first, because if you're feeding off other people's energies about it, you're just going to bounce all over the place. It's, it's too disturbing. You know? So how, how do you see your downtime? How do you take your um, pastime and downtime? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, a lot, oops, sorry, a lot of times I, I sleep because I'm just really tired. Yes. Um, and other times, you know, uh, we schedule, our, our lives are pretty scheduled, to be honest with you. There's times where we're just going straight. Um, I'll, sometimes I'll watch TV or a movie, not regular TV, more like see a movie with my husband or watch something on streaming video. Um, because I never know when shows are on. I, I can't even keep track of that. That's so crazy. Um, and, you know, uh, my husband is in a couple of bands. He plays guitar and sings. And so, like, I'll go see his shows. Like, he does live shows and stuff around here. So that's really fun. Or we'll go see, we'll go to New York City for a meal and, like, a show um, or go see a concert. My husband and I are very musical, and that's kind of our... Our, lang our love language between each other. That's how we met. And so um, that's really important to us. So we do see, you know, musical type of stuff. <laughs> we we kind of take turns picking, you know, what we want to see. So I think that's fun. amazing because uh, music for me is so vital. Do you see mm -hmm. that as an expression of um, your soul and your being with music? Yes, I feel like for all of us, music can express things that sometimes we can't, even ourselves. You know, maybe someone writes a, a song, a lyric that it's so powerful. And, you know, when you add it to music, it just enhances the power of the word, you know, the whatever the word is or the, the thought, the expression. And music moves you. Music is like across all languages, you know, and it's just that form of expression that's so it's very soulful, no matter what style it is. And the style is, doesn't matter. It, you know, soul and music really transcends the style and the, the genre. Yeah. And I just love that. You know, you can go to other countries and hear something. It just moves you the same way it's moving that person. And you may have nothing in common, you know, except that. And that's just beautiful. That reminded me of a performance that you attended, to, I think it was a couple of weekends ago recently, um, mm -hmm. where you were listening to somebody, and it really did move me. It was a gentleman that I thought was Israeli, and you... Yes. yes. My friend, oh, I'm so proud of my friend. She just, um, she's been a children's book illustrator for like 20 years and doing, you know, she's a freelancer, and um, she's a musician also, but we're, we've become very close. And just this past couple of years, she taught my daughter art, and... Um, her name is Vesper Stamper, and she's just incredible. And she's always been so well spoken, so well written. But she's like, I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer, you know. And then <laughs> she did this project. She went back to art school for her to get her MFA, and uh, she did this project, and it just evolved into something else. And um, I'm really proud to say that I'm like part of her journey, just trying to get her out there and get her seen because she was looking into licensing and all this stuff. And um, 
and we were working together and then she got this agent, which was so great. And then the agent was like, I love this thing you're doing. Can you make it into a book? And she kept saying, I'm not a writer, but then <laughs> it just became the a whole evolution. The story is so cool. It took her like three years to do it from start to finish, but now she's a published author with Alfred Knopf and, um, now she has a two book deal. So she's working on the second one now, but the first one is based on, and you talked about the interview with Eva, Eva um, with Brian and Rose. And this girl, my friend Vesper has, she went to Auschwitz. She went to the other, you know, uh, Bergen Belsen and she was over in Poland and she visited those places. And so this book is based on what happened right after this girl got released from, you know, from her, um, from her concentration camp. And, in her story and how she just became a human again, you know, and she was a musician in the story. So all that to say, this was one of her, they decided, um, Random House Children's Publishers decided to support her and do this art show in the city at the, the 14th Street Y. And so it was really, it's so funny because it's a book, but it was an art show of the art from the book. So they put beautiful posters up where they did the, she actually had prints for sale and, this friend of hers came and he performed live and his grandparents were actually survivors of Auschwitz. So he, yeah, I was talking with him and I'm like, Oh my gosh, it was just so powerful to see the imagery plus the music um, going at the same time. And she spoke about finding your voice and being an outsider as an artist. And, you know, my daughter was there as her art student for years and, and she was really touched. And she said, you know, mom, I, I can't be anything but an artist. I, when I heard Vesper speaking, it spoke to me, you know, and she's 17. So, you know, I, I already knew that about her, but for her to realize that, like that self-actualization process, it was just, oh. it was a beautiful event. So many, many layers, many, many, you know, um, layers of work and happiness and just, it was so poignant. The whole experience was like, oh my gosh, you know. Just listening to it, I felt the, how powerful that was. It's amazing, but thank you. Yeah, those types of things are just the music just created. You felt like you could have been in the movie of that story or that girl's life or the survivors who are just exiting the prison. What do they do with their lives? You know, they have nothing. Oh. So it's really amazing. It is. It's productive and it's positive. Yeah. And talking about positive, can we end on the story about your Profit with Passion Academy? How sure. Did you <laughs> yes, um, I know you and I are speaking a little bit about some of my dreams. Um, you know, I've always been an educator and um, I started as a music major and then I switched to education. I'm so happy about that. Um, sometimes you have a plan in your mind and things change anyway. And I always look at it like God is helping me along. <laughs> if I'm making, even if I don't know what I'm doing, he's helping me. Um, but, you know, I started this daycare 13 years ago with a friend of mine, and it evolved into something quite large now, which is great. And I have a, a, a person, a business partner that I own it with, and she's wonderful. And, but to me, a lot of women, you know, that's just, that's just doing a business and training and things like that. And there's a lot of influence there. But I just really had this dream of starting something online and training other women, maybe if they weren't just like with my brick and mortar business, it's all local, you know, people who I can influence here. But an online business has, you know, much farther reaching effects, or I can reach out to you, you and I are in so such different parts of the world right now, but we're connecting. And um, I just have this dream of being able to help women do what I've done. And that is start a business, either through coaching, um, training on how to do basic marketing, you know, marketing skills 101, and get yourself out there. Because I do agree with you, everyone, everyone has to find their own voice. And we don't always have the structure to do that in. We don't always have the initiative. We don't always have even the self-discipline or pathway in front of us. We're not sure how to do it. And so... For me, that's part of education and helping lead people through that process a little bit. You know, I, I find that I find a lot of value and that meets a need in me. Um, maybe it's a little selfish, but I, I feel like that's serving my purpose in life is helping others find what they need to be doing and then they feel fulfilled. So yes. that's my dream. And, and the development of that is something we've discussed. And so can you say a little bit about your idea of um, hosting masterminds? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, my goal this month, October, is one of my favorite months because the yes. weather is so beautiful. <laughs> and, um, it's the beginning of the, the fourth quarter. Here we go, the end of the year. And, um, you know, I plan on mapping out my business for the next year because, you know, to have some progression and development, like you said, that's a great word. You need to, you know, develop what you're working on. And I, I really have this vision and I'm working on, you know, you have the vision and the dream, then you're like, oh, I have to fill in the, the blanks, you know, underneath, fill in how to do it. I have this dream of just building a mastermind where people who are specialists in certain areas or they're very passionate about something can come in and do a masterclass, that, you know, a pre-recorded masterclass that we offer to people who become members of the group. So I'm still working out the details of that, but, um, you know, that's something where I've asked you to be part of that because I just love your passion about finding your voice, so many other things too. But I see that that's something that you're, you are so passionate about and you also want to help others find their voice. And I feel like we really align in that kind of mentality and, you know, helping others do that because then you can find your purpose, then you can find your passion and you can feel, um, feel fulfilled as a human being because our lives are so short, you know, time flies too quickly and you just don't want to get to the end of your life and feel like, what was I doing? What did it count for? Did I make a difference in somebody else's life? You know, what was, what was all of this about anyway? And, you know, that's really important for me to help other people find that. So that's part of what I want to do is a masterclass and, you know, just educating people and looking at a person as a whole person, business wise, emotionally, spiritually, you know, all sorts of perspectives, but it's still in the works. <laughs> so. I think that's supportive um, in a holistic sense because it can be quite stressful and isolating when you start a business. And um, in the first couple of years, you're looking for support and mentoring. And it's so refreshing to hear people like ourselves who've been in that position mm. and who can lend that voice. Coming back to, the, to finding your voice, I see the alignment of what you feel and what you think and what you perceived and experienced is definitely the end result of being able to find your voice, to express yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. I think so many of us have suppressed ourselves and even you talked a little bit about that when I interviewed you about you just stay quiet for some reason. You just, you know, or you don't feel anyone's going to listen, um, whatever that is, but there's, it's, it's way beyond someone just listening. It's, it's so beyond that. It's actually for you. You feel empowered. You step into your power. Like we're so powerful as human beings. We don't realize how strong we are. Even if you don't have to come across as type A personality, aggressive or something to be powerful. It's the more power you get is by being aligned with who you are, be able to speak up appropriately. And like we talked about respectfully yes. and in love. Um, but that is where the real power comes in. And that is, and it's for you. It's not that someone else, and yes, someone else will need to hear you, but that's not the main purpose. And I, I feel like you yourself went through that. Absolutely. And it's about recognizing. So that's something else. When I'm talking with you, what I feel is that I recognize there is another lady who's equally got family and the business and life throws all these different lemons at them. But it's, um, it does confirm and it does, I think, help to just be able to express how that impacts us as families or as a, an individual even in that family. Yes. Because yes. we don't always have that opportunity. Nobody says to us, well, you can have, you know, what do you think about it? You know, what would you like to say about it? It's very rare you get that invite. Very true. And I think we should do more inviting too, don't you? Uh, much more. And that's something that, that I felt when I was talking to you. It's that uh, permission, it's that invite, and it's the power. You mentioned the word, the power in the voice. Because yes. there is power in the voice. The, the, the thing that, that possibly would destroy it is the person who is opinionated and just yells. I think that's the difference. Yeah. When you have somebody who's just yelling, because they're usually emotionally um, in a, a bad place. That's what destroys the communication. Mm, that's true. That's true. It's almost worse than not speaking at all. <laughs> so it's always nice to come back to um, a groundedness, a centeredness, and a calmness mm. of 
knowing who we are as individuals. Yes. And that's the important part. Yes. I think for so many years, I, I completely agree with you. And I think for so many years, I tried to be something else, something um, maybe more proper, more calm, more less extreme, less emotional. And, you know, I wasted so much energy on trying to be what I thought was the right individual or the right, I don't know. And it probably wasn't even, it's not my parents' fault or anything. It must have been my own head voice talking to myself, you know. And I, there was a point after 40, I just remember, I thought, I'm, I'm done. I am done just doing, that's ridiculous. I have wasted so much of my precious energy on fighting my own personality. I can still be respectful. I can still be loving and still be myself and have a voice. And that to me, um, it just freed me up. It was just wonderful. And I, for, I choose to forgive some people in my life at that point too. And it was an act of choice and it was like a sheer act of the will, but then it like the emotions came later as like a process. You probably know more about that. Um, it just released me. And I think so many of us need to do that. And, you know, I, I hope someone like you, like you're a great coach, you can help coach people through that process that took me way too many years to get to and arrive at on my own. So if anyone's watching this, you should talk to Carol and sign up with her. <laughs> Don't be like me. <laughs> Don't wait so long. It took you know. me a long time too. <laughs> I'll admit it. I don't think there is a stand that you can put on something. It just yeah. happens. And as you came back to something you said originally, you moved to it and you get mm -hmm. a calling to it. So that's your time. But you, have to, but you have to hear that time. Yeah. Don't miss it. And that's, I, true. that's what's happened to the two of us. We've, we've um, responded. And the word respond is what we needed as opposed to react. So the reaction is yeah. the angry bit. And the yes. bit where we don't know who we are. And so insightful. Yeah. And when we're insecure, but when we're secure and it comes from a place of love, that's the response we give. And then we recognize it in one another. I love that. That, that is very insightful. It, it's absolute truth. Reaction is angry. Yes. And response is love. Yep. Yes. And, and, and unfortunately, that's what we need to see beyond and move beyond. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. I'm so pleased we met through live tribe okay. i'm so pleased to hear um you live here and that that confirms what i heard you say about collaborating because you don't see people as a competition and that in business for me is um building the development of any business needs to be that you build it on strong foundations and you develop it but you develop it in collaboration because we're always learning new things the whole time especially with technology absolutely we're so blessed with this technology i'm so absolutely. happy we're, we're amazing aren't we just doing this live all the way so thank you so much cassandra um how can people uh, get hold of you and how can they contact you should they need uh, yeah you can find me on instagram at profit passion academy and that's probably the best way there are links on there and you can email me from there and go to my website from there it's all kind of there so at profit passion academy so carolyn i just want to say thank you so much for inviting me on it's a privilege and honor to be here i appreciate your time and your generosity of spirit you really you're a very generous person i just that's like the word that keeps coming to my mind when i talk to you it's like you're so real and honest and straightforward and you're just so generous. I thank you so much for your time and everything. So I always learn from you, <laughs> especially in live drive. <laughs> I think that the, thank that's you. felt from my, my behalf because what I feel this side is um, the actual attraction of somebody in the same place, but so far away and yet not so far away mm -hmm. and the sharing of it. So it's the very important part of sharing. And you're, um, I would say, generous in your sharing. And that's very good for social media. So if anybody's looking as to how social media works, this is an example of how it works. Perfect. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Have a wonderful <laughs> Sunday evening. You too. You too. <laughs> Get some rest. I'll watch it live tomorrow. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Don't forget to, to listen to Jack Ross's five minutes.
I absolutely will. I'll be in stitches. <laughs> <All about lemons. laughs> Thank you again, Carolyn.